Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP, as well as the vast majority of crypto and finance. And before we dive on in, I hope everybody's having a beautiful day or a beautiful night, wherever you guys are. So with that in mind, let's talk about a few things. So on the screen here, I do have this post from Rahul Advani. Before we actually look into this though, I wanna start off with a few things that's happening currently around the world and what we recently just seen from Christine Lagarde because this is going to all make sense after we look in to this post from Christine Lagarde and this video that Riz XRP posted from Euro 20 plus the conference that Christine Lagarde is actually quoting here. So we do see about 200 young people from across Europe are in Frankfurt for uh, Buns Bank's Euro 20 plus event. Um, I was delighted to answer their questions on the economy and inflation. Thank you to the Buns Bank for the in invitation. So very interesting. Um, we have been starting to see a lot of discussions on the forefront of the evolution of our financial system. And Christine Lagarde has been one that has been very open regarding this. Also remember that Christine Lagarde has held private meetings with major individuals from the IMF, for example, and even the MAS um, and so many other players. And of course, guess who was there? Brad Garlinghouse. Now I bring that up because again, those meetings, those private closed door meetings are very significant because again, they're private backdoor meetings uh, that we don't know about until later dates. Now there's been a lot of discussions regarding those meetings. They still get brought up today. Uh, they are a little bit older now. I think that it's like over five years now, um, but they're still significant because again, no other player in this market has held those closed door meetings with central bankers and the big organizations around our financial system like Ripple um, has. And also even remember, Ripple Swell is a banking conference held by a crypto based company. So with that in mind, let's go over here to this uh, video. This got posted, like I said, by Riz XRP, Euro 20 plus Town Hall, MIT, Christine Lagarde. An evolution is on its way. There is an evolution that is underway. If you look at, you know, if you think about how you pay many things, it doesn't involve coins or banknotes. You will use your phone, you will use electronically supported devices, and you will use a payment infrastructure that helps you move your money around when you want to buy something. So we have to prepare for that future. And we have to, you know, be sovereign in that respect as well. Which is why we should continue to develop and eventually launch, if it is the decision of the governing council, a digital euro, which will be a digital version of cash so that we can be the master of our destiny, both in terms of the media on which our currency travels, but also the infrastructure payment, so that we are not at the mercy of anyone who suddenly says, oh, you're not going to use my infrastructure anymore. I'm not sending you any gas, remember? Does that mean that banknotes will go away? No, no, because there are people, and maybe some of you in the room, who are quite happy to have a banknote in their pocket. And there is no reason why it should go away. But I, I don't want to lead an institution where eventually, in a few years' time, people will turn around and say, what have you been doing? We are now under attack by other currencies, that are invading our space, and we are at the mercy of somebody else, including possibly tech companies, that will actually manage all that. Thank you very much. Oh, I don't want to do that. And neither, neither does Joachim Nagel nor any of the members of the governing council. We just have to stand ready and to make sure that we are resilient, as we have said. So there you guys have it. And again, yes, a significant evolution is underway. Our entire way of making transactions and payments and the entire financial infrastructure is seeing a major change. Now, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen next week. It's not going to happen next year, but it's already underway. Things are changing. Standardization is being brought in. Regulations are being planned. There's drafts around global regulatory frameworks. This is all happening while everyone is only focused on one thing, 
and that is, when's XRP going to moon? And it's crazy because we look at the value of XRP as US dollars. We don't look at XRP as one XRP equals one XRP. And the reason why I say that, because again, a lot of people make the excuse on, oh, one XRP will always equal one XRP. That's great and all. But again, is that, you know, something that we could argue and say, well, that's why we don't need to worry about the price. No, but I just say that everyone is looking at XRP as just a way to get rich. I look at XRP as a significant, significant underlying technology that could bring about one of the most insane transformations that we've ever seen around our financial system and even around technology itself. And it's not just XRP. This entire space has incredible projects and incredible technology, but it's a small percentage of the space. We still have a lot of work to do, but it's work that we are seeing, you know, getting done. But also, outside of that, now I want to dive into what Raul Advani is saying. So he's the public policy at Ripple. Um, this is a significant player. And just recently, we do see this week's APAC Policy Digest recaps Ripple and Medico participating at the Crypto Assembly in Sydney, as well as regulatory updates from RBA Info, which is the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia, uh, the BOK, the FSC, uh, the MAS, and even the BIS. Now, let's dive deep into this LinkedIn post uh, by, by uh, Rule. So, Team Ripple and Medico join forces at the Crypto Assembly in Sydney, uh, organized by Blockchain APAC, where Nicole, David, Neil, and I spent two fruitful days in discussions with the public and private sector to develop a course of action for the future of Australia's crypto sector. Again, this highlights the importance and the significant player that Ripple actually is in the global ventures around crypto um, and really kind of realizing the true vision behind uh, the crypto sector as well. Now, beyond that, um, there's a lot of just wasted stuff here that I don't want to go over like this stuff. I actually just want to get into the juiciness. So ju uh, regulatory highlight of the week, the Monetary Authority of Singapore published the final uh, trank of consultation conclusions on its proposed regulations for digital payment token service providers in Singapore. MAS will issue guidance for DPT service providers to implement business conduct measures around identifying, mitigating, and clearly disclosing potential and actual conflicts of interest. Additionally, there are requirements to publish policies and procedures that govern the listing of a DPT, as well as for handling customer complaints and disputes. DPT services or service providers should determine a customer's risk awareness, not offer any incentives to trade in crypto, not uh, provide financing margin or leverage transactions, not accept local credit card payments, and limit the value of crypto in determining a customer's net worth. MAS will also require DPT service providers to maintain high availability and recoverability of critical systems in line with uh, current requirements imposed on financial institutions. These measures will take effect in phases from mid-2024 to provide an adequate transitional period for implementation. Other noteworthy updates, um, the Reserve Bank of Australia Payments Systems Board held its quarterly meeting at which it discussed topics including payments regulatory reform and enhancing cross-border payments. The Bank of Korea, along with the Financial Services Commission slash Korea uh, Financial Intelligence Unit and Financial Supervisory Service will conduct a pilot for CBDC in quarter four of 2024, and the BIS published a paper presenting a money view analysis of stablecoins. The BIS also published a report on CBDCs and privacy. So again, these are significant moves being made here. Ripple is a part of the entire move. Again, highlights the significance that Ripple is really kind of bringing to the table. They are a major player here. And also remember, right, like as we actually look at Rohul um, and his background, it's insane to say the least. Like, first and foremost, check out his about section here. My interests lie at the intersection of policy, technology, and financial markets. I am based in Singapore and am responsible for leading Ripple's engagement and advocacy with regulators and policymakers in the Asia Pacific region to support and develop regulation that promotes responsible innovation in digital assets and blockchain technology. Prior to joining Ripple, I spent over 12 years in financial services mostly. Uh, or most recently as the head of pol uh, public policy Asia Pacific at the International Swaps and Derivatives Association, the ISDA. Prior to that, I worked with Bloomberg LP in their offices in uh, Mumbai, Singapore, and Hong Kong in multiple roles across valuations, business development, and sales for both exchange traded and OTC derivative products. This is an individual that is the mind behind a lot of derivative movements. Um, and again, the ISDA is a, is a significant player. We've talked about ISDA multiple times with Ripple, how they uh, really kind of infiltrate, infiltrated the uh, de derivatives market, which is a massive market. We're talking quadrillions of dollars 
Um, like I said, this is one of the major players to watch for. And also big shout out to XRP Drops um, because I was able to actually see this from XRP Drops. But also beyond that, we also have the Reserve Bank of Australia down here. Payment System Board held its quarterly meeting at which it discussed topics including payments, regulatory reform, and enhancing cross-border payments. Within this, we actually see here new technology in the clearing. This is from November 23rd. In the clearing and settlement of securities and its impl Im implications for supervision, the board considered the potential efforts of the adoption of technologies on clearing and settlement processes. Again, this is all regarding the, the market infrastructure. This is a change of the underlying clearing and settlement layer. And we just talked about this with um, SWIFT. SWIFT is actually changing their clearing and settlement process as well in terms of their infrastructure. This is a very big deal. And we also do know that the Reserve Bank of Australia is also working with Hedera. There's been a lot of connections with Hedera. Uh, they are moving pretty quickly on this. But again, the underlying clearing and settlement layer is being changed. And I do believe that Ripple is at the forefront of this. They are a significant player. They have been tapped in along the way. This is a very, very big deal. And also, last but not least, I do want to put full focus on what we recently just seen from blackberry xrp mr intuitive in plain sight all along remember ripple went from the media darling pre-2017 then something changed one of my favorites mentioned in the report for digital assets by steven and i'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name for trump's executive order 13772 here we have a financial system that creates economic opportunities, non-bank financials, fintech, and innovation. This is Executive Order 13772. And we do see the secretary and even the counselor to the uh, secretary, Craig S. Phillips. Remember that name. Over here, participants in the Executive Order engagement process, R3, Ripple. Two major players here. You can see all the other players on here, but those are the two major ones that we are looking at here. Um, over here. You could actually see all of the major names that were tapped in. These are all significant players within our uh, financial system and our entire government. But again, R3 and Ripple are the main ones to look at. And why? Well, because we know that Ripple is Ripple. R3 is R3. And when we look at R3, guess what we recently just seen? So there was a post that was going around on how like 10 things the XRP community needs to learn. And uh, David Schwartz said, to my knowledge, all of these are essentially true. There are some small exceptions such as this one. And this is regarding two and three, which is R3 does not use XRP or even the XRP ledger. When we actually look at this, guess what? R3 launches universal uh, settler application to facilitate global payments on Corda, XRP, the first settlement mechanism. Now, yes, a lot of people were trying to say that this is... Um, this is wrong. XRP is not tapped in anymore. It's XDC. Uh, they sued Ripple, this, that, whatever. But it seems as though we have confirmation from the CTO at Ripple himself, David Schwartz. This was November 16th. And he's saying, hey, listen, there, there are some small exceptions, such as this one. So uh, this is a big one. Now, also, remember what I said, right? Going back to that initial statement here, Craig S. Phillips, guess what? Craig Phillips is the director at Ripple, and he had held uh, leadership roles at Morgan Stanley and even BlackRock. This is a major player to look at. And again, it shows you how significant Ripple is. And we even see here where he oversaw regulatory framework development for the financial system under Executive Order 13772, as well as the efforts to enhance the financial sector cybersecurity through the Office of Critical Infrastructure Protection and Compliance Policy. Again, this is a significant player. So with that in mind, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on because of more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And uh, before I do close out, if you guys do want to go get a decent wallet right now, 40% off. This is uh, a limited time only. Definitely go check out Decent Wallet, 40% off right now. A single pack, you're saving $50. On a double pack, you're saving $128. This is a deal that you cannot miss out on. Once a year, this deal comes around. Definitely go get this if you haven't already. Cold storage is so damn crucial, especially in this day and age where hacks and scams and phishing and things like that are going around like crazy. You need to make sure that you are tapped in on cold, cold storage devices. And remember, only buy it from the direct source, decentwallet.com. Links are down in the description below as well as in the comments below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Peace out.